When it comes to working with controllers, there's going to come a time where we need to reuse the same line or block of code multiple times throughout our project. This would be a great use case for extracting that portion of code we want to reuse out of our controllers and into what's called a service. Services are classes that contain reusable methods, which we can then import into our controllers or throughout our application and reuse as many times as needed. Now, another use case for services might come out of code structure preference. Some people prefer to have their controllers only accept, validate, call services, and return back a response. This keeps the controller slim and keeps your code easily reusable since all all of the business logic is extracted off into services. Now there's multiple different types of services that we can utilize within Adonis.js. For the purposes of this lesson, we're gonna be focusing on using static methods, using non-static methods, creating singleton services so that the same instance of a service is shared throughout the entire lifetime of our server. So let's start off with the static service approach. So first things first, we're gonna to want to have a place to house our services. So let's go ahead and create a directory within our app directory called services. And then within this folder, let's go ahead and create our first service. And we'll call this date service. Okay, and since services are classes, let's go ahead and export default a class called date service. So let's start off by focusing on static service methods. And since we don't really have any business logic to extract out, let's focus on utility services. So for our date service here, let's define a public static method called to date time. This will accept a date of type date time from Luxon and will allow this to also be null and we'll default it to null. And then let's also accept a time of the same. So date time or null and default it to no. So for our posts, let's say that we're going to have our date and time inputs be the native date and time input. So they're going to come up to our controller separate as a date value and a time value. We can still define them as Luxon values so they can come through as Luxon date times. But what we'll want to do is for the date, we'll just want to take the date values off of the provided date. And for the time, we'll just want to take the time values off the provided time and merge them into a single date time value. So let's instantiate our final date time value as date time dot right now. And then if we have a date, what we'll want to do is mutate our internal date time by setting. So date time dot set, and then we could just extract out the date values here. So the year would be date dot year. The month would be date dot month. And the day would be date dot day. And then we want to do the same thing for time. So if we have a time, date time equals date time dot set. And then we just do this for the time value. So hour would be time dot hour. Minutes would be time dot minute. Second would be time dot second. And let's just ignore milliseconds for right now. And then let's go ahead and return back our final date time value. So we have our first date service defined and it is the default export for our date service file. So since one area that we're gonna to wanna to use the service is whenever we're creating and updating posts so that we can accept the separate date and time values and merge it into a single one to store into the database, let's go ahead and use this service within our post controller, specifically within our, let's just focus on our store method right now, but in the future, we're also going to want it within our update method. So in order to use the service, since it's using a single static method, what we'll want to do is import it so we can import date service from app services date service. And then since it's using static methods, we don't need to instantiate the class or anything. We don't need to create a new instance. All that we need to do is actually use it directly off of that import. So, so within our store method here, let's just do const date time equals date service dot to date time. We could provide it a time and we could we could provide it a date and time value if we wanted to, but right now we don't have anything that we're accepting within our store method. So let's just leave it as null. We have those null defaults. So this should just return back a date time dot now. We can change these to back ticks. And let's go ahead and just inject this in here. So date time dot, and let's just call two string here. So we'll just convert that to a string. And voila, now we are using our date service to date time method. So let's go ahead and give it a test run. So let's jump into our terminal here and start up our server. And then let's jump into Insomnia or some other REST client here and send off a request to that endpoint. And you'll see we're creating a post of and the date time of right now. So that's how you can make use of services using static methods. Now using services with non-static methods is very similar to the static approach. The main difference is we won't use the static keyword when defining our methods. And we're also going to need to create an instance of the class in order to have access to the actual method. Additionally, you can also mix and match static and non-static methods on a single service class that may approach into preference territory. Some people may prefer to have 
have them separate. Some people might not care. The main difference is static methods are great when you can easily provide all the information the method will need via arguments. Non-static methods come in handy whenever you need to store data on the class itself to share information across methods or from the constructor itself. So in order to define a non-static method, all that we would do is public, leave off the static, and then define the method name. So let's do another utility method here called toDate that will take in a date time that is a Luxon date time. And we can default this to date time dot now. And then let's just return back a formatted string. So we can return date time dot to format. And then I'm just gonna wing the format here. I don't know whether or not this would be a very viable format, but we'll just do that for right now. So this is actually a great candidate for a static method because we are providing all the information that the method needs via arguments. Since in order to use this method, we're going to need an instance, we can also have a constructor here that would maintain some kind of information. We, we can accept information here. So accept info here of any type that we might need. So it could be a string, it could be a Boolean, what have you. And then we can instantiate that onto the, the service instance. And then we would be able to use that information within this method here. Uh, we could also just instantiate information directly off of the service itself. So we could have public default format equals, and then we could just have this be that format that we defined down there. And then we could access that directly within our method. So we could do this dot default format, and then we could also accept in a format here if we wish as well. And then we could default that to this dot default format as well if we needed to, and then we could just change this to format. Now you can also plop static methods onto your service as well. So this could be static if we wanted it to, in which case we would not need an instance of this. We could just do date service dot default time format. Um, but for demonstration purposes like right now, let's go ahead and just leave that as an instance variable. Okay, so we have our non-static method to date time that accepts a date time from Luxon. If one is not provided, it will default to right now via Luxon. And then it also accepts an optional format, which will just default to the class's default format. So let's go ahead and learn how we can make use of this. So let's jump back into our post controller here. And if we try to immediately access it, so if we do date service dot to you're going to notice that we only have two date time and two string available. So we need to create the instance of the class. And one way that we can do that is directly off of our post controller. So we could do public date service equals new date service, similar to the way that we created our default format. And now within our store method, we can access that via this date service dot. And now you see that we have our two date available and then we could pass it in our date time if we wanted to. And then we could replace our date time dot to string with our formatted date. So let's go ahead and save this, jump into Insomnia, send off this request again, and you'll see that it comes back as creating a post 123, 2022. So that seems to be working a okay as well. Now, whenever it comes to instantiating your classes, there's always multiple ways that you can go about it. So this is one way, and this is great if you just need a basic service class instantiated. However, if you need to provide additional information and you need additional context or anything like that, you can also instantiate it within the constructor. So we could change this public date service to be of type date service, and then we can instantiate it within the constructor. So we could do this dot date service equals new date service. And this way we could provide additional information to the services constructor if we needed to. And then you would just provide that like this. And then that would come through within here. So then we would need a constructor in here. And actually let's make this the default format. How about that? So let's do default format of type string. And then we could do this dot default format equals default format, which would overwrite whatever's defined here if one's provided. And then if one's not provided, we could just have this default to whatever we defined at the top level here. And then let's go ahead and actually just make that optional as well since we have a default. So let's jump back into our post controller. And instead of having like this, let's provide it a default format. So we could do, what was it? Month, month, year, year. Nope, that's not right. Month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. And let's actually, let's provide some delimiters there. There we go. Okay, so that's a good default service and it's a little bit different from what we have in our service class. So now if we come into Insomni and we send this off again, instead of seeing spaces here, we should see our slashes. And there they are. Now, one last way that we can instantiate our service is actually by using an Adonis.js fold. So Adonis.js fold comes with a decorator that is called inject. So we can decorate our post controller with it. So let's do at 
inject and call that like so and that imports from adonis.js fold and what that allows us to do is it allows us to take this off so there that goes and it allows us to take this out so there that goes and then all that we need to do is define whatever we want instantiated onto our post controller as an argument to the constructor so we would do public date service of type date service and then adonis.js fold will then take this argument and inject it onto our post controller so that we still have it accessible via our controllers, this property. And this inject method would work with any class really within your application. So we could also do that on our service as well if we needed to inject a service within this service here. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So we should just see the exact same thing. The main thing here is that it should still work. And there it is. And you can see actually our default format did go away since that's no longer being provided. Okay, so the last thing that we're gonna talk about today is creating singletons. So first I wanna take a look at the number of date services that are being instantiated for our post controller requests. So let's go ahead and within our constructor here, let's go ahead and just add a console log. So console.log date service instantiated. All right, and then let's just inspect within the console what is happening here. So let's go ahead and send off a few requests. So we'll send off one and you'll see just barely right down here, date service is instantiated and let's send off a couple more. So one, two, three, and there we go. So you can see for each request that we send, our date service is being instantiated. And the flow that's happening there is whenever Adonis.js receives a request, it's going to create a new instance of our post controller which in turn will then create a new instance of our date service for our post controller to use on the new post controller instance. So that's why every time that we send off a request, we're getting a new date service instance instantiated. If however, you needed your date service or whatever service you're working with to maintain the same instance throughout the lifetime of your server, we would want to convert this service into a singleton. So one way that we can do that is instead of default exporting just the class itself is we can take this default export off and then down at the bottom of our file, we can just return back a new instance. So we'll export default new date service. So now anytime that we import this service, we're gonna get back that instance of this service. And now since we're exporting a new instance of our service, we're really not gonna be able to access these static services unless we do a separate export just for that. Uh, but the easiest thing to do here is to then just make all of our methods non-static methods so that we can easily access them off of our default export. So just take the static keyword off of our two date time there. And now within our post controller, you're gonna notice that we have a red squiggly on our date service for the type. And that's because we're now exporting a value instead of a particular type for the class. So let's take this constructor off because we really don't need a new instance instantiated anyway, since we're exporting a new instance of our class. And one way that we could use this class is just via date service dot and then whatever. So we could change this dot date service to just date service dot to date now because date service is an actual instance of our date service. Alternatively, if you did want it on this for your controller, if you wanted it on your post controller instance, what you could do is tack it onto it like so. So you could do public date service equals and then just set it to the date service value. Note that we are not reinstantiating it. We're just setting this date service to the actual date service value. So now both of these usages are perfectly valid. We could access it just as we were whenever our methods were static or we can access it right off of our class instance. So if we go ahead and give this a test in Insomnia here, you'll see that we get back just the same value as we were before. If we take a look at our console log, you'll see we only have one instantiated. If we send off a couple more requests, you're gonna see that we still only have that one class instantiated. More so if we actually mutate this. So let's have, just for demonstration purposes, let's put a count on here and we'll instantiate that to zero. And then every time that we call to date, let's do this dot count plus equals one. And then let's just console dot log this dot count. So our server's restarted. So we're gonna have our class reinstantiated here. And let's send off a couple of requests. So we have first one there. So you can see one right down there. And let's send off a couple more. And you'll see that our count is being maintained and incremented upon for various requests. And if we head into our routes file and manually define, so let's do route dot get and let's do example here async we won't need anything out of there and let's just return back date service dot to date 
Okay, so let's just return that back. So we're just using our date service. So we're importing it at the top level here again from app services, date service. And then we're just returning back our to date here. So if we open back up our console here, so we restarted our server, let's send off a couple of requests here. And then let's switch the server to our example endpoint. And this one we did as a get request. And let's send off a couple here as well. And you'll notice that the count is maintained despite those being separate imports as well. So we have this as properly being a singleton service. So the only way that we're gonna get a new instance of our date service now is by restarting our server. So those are three different ways that you can create and maintain services within your application. Mm -hmm.